can be here tonight again um, around our Bible study. We hear it to us. All of our Lord to to fight us here. Let's have to walk on the two spot here. Uh, even here, if you have to, I want to pray and then we'll uh, begin our study uh, this morning, uh, this evening. Father, we again come before your greatness and worship your name. Uh, that amazing grace that saved the rich uh, like us, uh, like me, uh, from uh, our wretched sin and our nature of sin. Uh, but Lord, that you've restored us uh, through the wonderful and complete work of your son, Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, as we begin this Bible study, uh, help us to continue to see your word as the lamp uh, to our feet and the light <coughs> to our path. You know, that we may continue to walk up this walk of faith, uh, knowing that we have the very truth uh, that guides us uh, every single day of our lives. So blessed be the name of the Lord uh, from the beginning of this study to the end tonight. In Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. 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 Um, uh, Amen. So tonight we're going to be looking at the second part of the paragraph that we started in the last study, and that was from verses 20 uh, through to verse 23, um, and, but we'll focus on the last two verses in that paragraph, verses 22 and 23 for tonight. Um, and the thinking today is, um, is the heart of evangelism. Ah, le fatu atua o le olanga ta'ala'i. Um, and if you think about evangelism, if you think about sharing the gospel, if you think about outreach, um, that's really um, the, the center of tonight's Bible study um, and how we, how we reach out to those who are either confused uh, by apostates or those who have turned from the truth. So there are others that are impacted by these ungodly men. And then there are those who are in that state. How do you actually, is there a way that we can outreach or share the gospel and, and continue to um, share truth with those who are seen to have no hope at all? And so Jude will um, share those uh, things with us. Um, I loa i tātou o tangata whaola i nga um, O le si fua le o lo o langa uh, whānau whawina ah, O le o le fua le tangata o langa ua tūsa o loto e le whaola tanga um, O le o langa i nga ia tauatu la le tanga le lei ah, I nga ia tauatu le mea ua whaie le a li'i i lo tātou So i fua ma uh, lo wola So um, we're going to read uh, those verses uh, to... Start us off, verse 23 to 23, uh, and then uh, we'll read in Psalm 1 as well. In English, Iya. But you are, uh, we'll read all the, what, four verses? 20 to 23 from the morning, Iya. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, faith praying, praying in the Holy Spirit, Spirit. keep yourselves in the love of God. Looking, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have kept confession, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments of the fire by the flesh. Fasa moa nus furu nus fumortolu iya, a o tolu el peri. Also, uh, so today there's are uh, two uh, major thoughts that I'll be sharing today from uh, the two verses 22 and 23. Um, the Olevaina le o le tusia yuta e faapea ona au mai yaise 
va aina ile awala e mafayai ona tato um atu la yatu uh, etete ene de tangata la ne ta uo tangata wo fa ale ma ah. so um these four verses that we read today this is where Jude is now coming to the end of his letter and he's he's managed to write the majority of his letter from verse 4 right through to verse 19 so a large portion of this epistle was trying to explain what um, an ungodly person looked like according to the description that he gave in verse 4. These were ungodly men. Uh, these were uh, those who have turned the grace of God into lewdness. These who deny the Lord God. Uh, and throughout our study of Jude, we've come to understand um, that this was to mean the apostates, uh, those who were once in truth and have turned away from truth. And so Jude spends the majority four-fifths of this letter um, explaining and articulating and giving um, us examples from the Old Testament of the apostasy, uh, of the apostates and how a lot of the Old Testament stories um, reflect this very attitude. So, but then we come to verse 20 to 23, and this is where I've titled this section, The Defense That We Do Have. Um, and Jude now exhorts and he encourages the readers uh, and, and these Jewish and Gentile believers, um, and he encourages them, well, how do they stand um, and how do they defend against such men? And the last study we, we saw of, uh, um, uh, in those two verses, 20 and 21, there was uh, four things that we looked at, and that was number one, that you build your faith, um, and that by building your most holy faith, it was building on God's word. Number two, that we also had a look at the, the importance and the value of prayer in, in the believer's life and the defense against um, such men. Three, um, there was to, uh, verse 21, it says, to keep yourself in the love of God. And that was, a, we, we understood in the unpacking of that, it was to to have and live a discerning life in the things of the Lord. And fourthly, um, to focus on the hope and the assurance that we have in Christ's return and the eternal hope that we, ha that we have in eternal life. Amen. Amen. But tonight, we come to the last two verses, and the, the, a greater exhortation that Jude gives here to the, the readers is um, the believers to continue to evangelize, ah, to continue to, to win souls, or to have that heart and that attitude that we as believers must have, and that attitude is to continue to share the gospel, ah, to evangelize the meaning of that word. Um, that the first part we want to look at is in verse 22 and it reads and on some have compassion making a distinction <clears throat> the first part that we want to have a look at is um, the outreach to the confused because uh, what we see here is that um, Jude says on some 
indicating that not all have uh, have sort of fallen into this apostasy state. There are those that are probably on the fringe. There are probably uh, those who are confused by what they see in that early church. And so Jude um, articulates and he says, and on some um, have compassion. So he's clearly explained and he says throughout this letter that there are those who have taken the grace of God and flipped it on its head, turned it inside out and declared it as something lewd. Um, but he's saying there are some that we must have compassion on. Ah, so um, so he's, in, he's encouraging the reader. Um, and I guess the application for us today, encouraging us today to, to be discerning. Ah, that, that very first part of your heart to evangelize is to discern um, and pray. And hence the reason why um, as, as our, uh, any of us, before we head out, before we go into our school places, before we go into our workplaces, that's part of our prayer. That the Lord will use us today, Lord, uh, to be us a light in our workplace, in our, our school environment, in our public arenas, wherever we're at. That the Lord will, you know, help us to discern who it is that we can share the gospel to. And in, in this sense, this is what Jude is saying. Ah, atato mata mata le na mo mo na fa me fa ko lo suma lua fa ma ia o to wa lo fa atu inisis ono no winga ele o tanga ta uma na 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 fa ale mata ele o tanga ta uma na li li ese a foli na mai fa mai yuta e ya inisio ina to pi wa pi wa ha a fia a ita na ta ia wa foli na mai wo ese ma ne me moni a ya ila ila to wi pi foli na mai ele o malo si a be what a fear to a malato. Ilia manga lea, lea life and my yaya ya yuta. Ia auto, a lofatula in vaina lea, a lo lofa inisi, o lisi tau e tau e vaina lea, o nisi ua ua fasisi, a bu fasisi, ina be wa fango fear on a fear ilato. I wing out a matter nay, lea tatu lo o e wo esse money. Memoni, lefa ma ya ya le tu si apolo ya efeso. Ab oni si uwa fe avea ina a, uwa fe avea ina i i lea tala, ma lea tala pe uwa fe toso a ina i upu ma fa amatalanga. Ah, Paul refers to these people in Ephesians four fourteen, those who have been tossed to and fro and carried about. Um, and the word that he uses there by the trickery of men. Ah. And so I, I see that these got, these people that Jude is probably referencing here are those who have been almost like side sidetracked and swiped in by and taken up by the influence of some of these apostates and some of these ungodly men. We see that Jesus uh, speaks to Nicodemus, and Nicodemus was caught up in the in the whole Pharisaical upbringing, ah, and he was caught up in that whole world of um, thinking that they were waiting for the reigning Messiah. And Jesus turns up and Nicodemus thought, hey, there's something different about this person. And so Nicodemus is an example. Nicodemus <laughs> Le e ia le se se na a le la fa mai le mo li ma wo yo ani fa mai ni ko te mo le ta si o farisei o fa mai wa lu wa ne o ia ya yesu ile po wo fa mai ya te ya rapi u ma to wi lo o o ele a wa o o ma liu mai mai le a tua a wa ele ma fa ye se ta si o na fa o ia fa e lo ma te fa ya ana le ya te ya le a tua what does Jesus do? He jumps on that and then he shares the gospel eh? and says, Nicodemus, you must be born again. So Jesus is an ultimate example of how do we share the gospel with those who are seem like they're sitting on the fence ah, or they have some sort of light. They have a little bit of light um, and they're just wanting to, you know, they have that Nicodemus heart. And so we remember that in, in John 3 verse uh, 1 and 2, it says that Nicodemus, the ruler of the Jews, <coughs> Uh, Pharisee, uh, rule of the Jews, it says, This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And that wasn't all the Pharisees. 
actually, it actually says that it's probably it was probably only Nicodemus, because by the time Jesus dies, Nicodemus is in that scene now. He becomes a believer, and so Jesus is a is an example, the ultimate example of one who shares the gospel uh, with one who is it almost seems like they're in the midst of all of this false teaching. Ah. So, or, or, so when Jude says, and on some, have compassion. Uh, um, it says there to, um, and on some have compassion, making a distinction. Uh, and I just want to point out that that word distinction comes from the Greek word diakrino. And that's to discern. That's where, I, that's where we have that heart of discerning um, in terms of understanding that there is a difference of uh, people, ah, uh, na yafaya male faatatau, mana yel upu na faatatau. Now, i e e yaili ananga le na ina ia ilo le le ilo lotto malo mafo fau, olo yai nisi olo of asese ina itatau yai le upu talai le upu ole talani le olo yai nisi uwa faasese ina imafai ona au yai Laumoli mau a pe la ba ole ata fa tai tai lena au mai e Yesu. And the Jude says, and on some um, have compassion, making a distinction. And the word compassion, um, here we we very much have uh, the heart of evangelism. And this is uh, compassion, which comes from the Greek word to to show mercy a uh, uh, and to and to have a deep love for the lost to show kindness that you would uh, in your heart that you would uh, make a distinction that you would discern in your heart this person is probably caught up in the era of the ungodly men of the apostates um, and that you discern in your heart that you love them enough and i love that um, a lot of our team tend to use that phrase ah we love you enough to tell you the truth eh? that we love you enough to tell you that there is eternal hell and eternal heaven, and, and that's a beautiful phrase in terms of outreach and reaching out to those who are lost. Um, <coughs> Uh, so in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, and Paul says it and articulates it in this verse. He says there, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. So we see straight away that the in the early church, the apostles, they were all of one mind, that there is a deep compassion for the lost. Uh, Paul uses here that you who are spiritual, restore. Uh, and the word restore uh, comes from a Greek word that means to mend or to strengthen those who have been impacted by sin. And so Paul mentions in his letter around how do we restore how do we mend? How do we continue? Those of us who are spiritually stronger, how do we share the gospel message, the good news to those who have fallen into or been impacted by those who are in sin? Now, so I find a mower sit on a chase at a sea on a sala or auto oil lay a nana, ear auto for a forty mile lay or for a bear in a malinoto or the anna malu, my year for a tete oe, in a netty for our so so in a oe, Lela mower ile a nana lea or the lehana lofa, and for my paulo, ear um, ear for an alia, le lotto, anna malu. O ile yaile lotso le pi o o le anga malu male lotso alofa ete faya ile nga luenga le o le alofa tu le ua fa a sisiina ah so Paul uses that word um uh, you who are spiritual uh, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Ah.
And that's the, the other beauty of evangelism is that we don't go, you know, some people call it Bible bashing and like, you know, you're wrong and I'm right. And um, there, there, there is a heart of, of humility in which we continue to share uh, the good news and the gospel. And so as Jude writes, he says, on, and on some have that compassion, uh, have that to show kindness, to have mercy on those who may be confused. They might be in a state of confusion. They're, they're looking around them. They've been caught up in all of these lies. Um, and when you come in, you, we should be challenged as believers to make that distinction and continue to share the gospel uh, with that love and that compassion. Okay, so that first verse today, and on some have compassion, make a distinction. Hopefully that's uh, giving you some sort of, uh, or equipping you. Ah, so you now know, oh, okay then, so there are some who I can discern in my heart, you know, and pray, Lord, help me to share the gospel with this person who might be caught up uh, in, in some sort of um, apostasy. Ah. So, and it says there, making a distinction. <coughs> but then we move on to the second point. And the second point, Jude almost changes gears. So he shifts from gear four, and he moves into gear five and into overdrive. And he says this, but others. <laughs> and so there's the others. So there's one group that are sitting on the fence, and they're probably on the fringe, and they've probably just been swept up. But then he says, there are others that you have to save with fear and you literally have to pull them out of the fire and you have to hate the very garments defiled by the flesh. So um, those words, uh, it can be quite, um, uh, can't understand what it is that Jude is trying to say. But let's break it down. and um, so what Jude is saying here, he says, but others save with fear. Okay, so, uh, so this is more than just the people in verse 22 are. Uh, these are the ones who are actually probably leading the apostasy. They are the apostates. They're right there. They're, they're the false teachers. They're the cult leaders. And what Jude is saying here, he says, but others save with fear. The meaning of the word save here is sotso. And sotso is to restore to health a one who is suffering from disease. So picture the one who is like in the state of apostasy. They are absolutely in sickness of sin, in need of a cure. And we, as believers, must continue to stand for truth. Because it says there, um, save, but others save with fear. This fear isn't the, the, the fear of being afraid. This fear is you have so much reverence for God that you fear of displeasing God in this work if you don't outreach to these non-believers, ah, to those who are in such a state, that, that we must continue to save or to uh, 
uh, offer the healing message of the gospel, to offer the only message that can save is the gospel, as, as we've been learning from the book of Corinthians, that we can only offer Christ, preach Christ, and Him crucified. And so, uh, so Jude is exhorting again, much stronger, he says, but others save with fear. we can turn to James chapter 5 and I'm going to ask um, Brother Jedi please to read verse 19 and 20. And this is um, Jude's brother and he says something very similar as well. Uh, and it reads, uh, Brethren, if any of you do, do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sins. Praise the Lord. Ah. And, uh, and uh, my version says, Let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Thank you, Yeti. So um and so James is saying very much similar thing to his brother Jude in terms of continuing to share the gospel with the lost. Jude actually goes on to say, um, but others save with fear, and he describes this, pulling them out of the fire. And pulling them out of the fire, and, I, and because we know that Jude always references the Old Testament, um, here's another reference to the Old Testament, and it's the book of Amos chapter 4 verse 11, um, where Amos, uh, God writes with regards uh, to his people Israel, and, and there's a line there in verse 11, and you were like a firebrand plucked from the burning. And so I imagine that Jude has that text in mind with regards to the saving of the lost. Um, there is greater work and I just wrote there there's a lot more work involved with this level of error you know the other group they were the confused one 
These ones who seem like there is absolutely no hope, this is where there's a lot more work in those of us and all of us who share the gospel. For those of us who, who seem like, man, I, it, that's a tough one. That, that sister, that brother, that is a tough one. That leader of that cult, that leader of that religion, that, I probably can't go there. But Jude is saying that we must save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. The word they are pulling out of the fire is the same word that we use for the rapture. Ah, it's harpazo. There's a, there's a, there's a force. Um, and, and the, it's to seize or to carry off by force. Le wino le upule na iya seti. Ah, I'm, I'm anatui le upuna seti. E le o se, le lako mili mili ka aka mai fai fai le mu iya iya. Le e, 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 Ina ia i loa le tangata lea le mea moni. Ina ia i faa longo le tangata lea i le tala le nei. I was just saying in Psalm 1 that there are moments where you would use evangelism and you would use all the tools that you have in your back pocket, right? And, but then there are others that you discern in your heart that they're just totally in this lost state. Then your voice starts to raise. Then you start to use that other glare that you have and your voice starts to become passionate and you become emboldened and not because of you but because of your fear of the Lord you revere God so much that you want this brother or sister to at least hear something and so this is where the pulling them out are carry them off you know some of us might literally want to pick them up and shake them that's probably not advisable but you know um, you know we, we get so emboldened um, with regards to the the era because the era here that is referred to is fire ah, so Jude uses quite strong words to describe those who are in the state of era but we're encouraged tonight, brethren, um, because remember, it says in the New Testament, in Paul's letter to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We hear those words spoken and written by Paul, but again, it, it encourages us um, that, you know, for though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh, but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal or are not of this world, but they are mighty through God. Um, E lepe tia ai olo. O le olanga, o lo olanga talai malo olanga alofa ile atua malo olanga ya alofa ile si tangata. Malo olanga fo ila ete alofa ile tangata le fo olinga mai wole ai se fa amoe mo ile talai na ole talai le. Am a faita ato te fa amalo losi ina ia tato tau le taua fa ale nana mata la ile upole ola mata la ile fa ole tanga. Ya Yesu Kiriso, tato te mafaya, ona o a upenga lo tato ne itawa, e le fa ale tino, ae fa ale anana. So when we think about God's work, when we think about, especially um, when we think about sharing the gospel, when we, we think about this particular group that Jude's talking about, you know, these are these are those in a state of confusion, these are those who are, seem like, they're, man, they're, they're in it. Ah, There is no hope. But Judah is saying, man, pull them out, you know, save them with fear, pull them out of the fire um, and, and love on them. And we don't do that in our strength. You know, there's no, 
there's, there, there's, there shouldn't be pride in the work that we do when we share the gospel. But we do it because we have been strengthened and enabled and empowered by God himself, that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And then there's a final statement there. It says there, um, pulling them out of the fire, save other, uh, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. And Jude says, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. The word hating uh, is defined as detesting. Ah, there's, a, there's an absolute hatred for. It says, even the garments defiled by the flesh. Under the tunics of uh, the, the attire at that time, there was the undergarment, ah, or the underwear. Um, and it's saying here that um, that is defiled. And the, the meaning of the word defiled there is stained or soiled. And that's a description of, um, of the apostasy that these people were in. And for us as believers who continue to share the gospel, who continue to stand for the truth, who continue to tell uh, about the light of the glorious crucifixion and death and resurrection of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, that in the middle of all of the, the things that stand against the truth, that we continue to share the truth, um, that we continue to save them in fear, pulling them out of the fire, but at the same time, hating even the garments stained by the flesh. Ah, so I tatu te alo lofa i le tamata le ina i tala ina pe i ai le mau o le tala le le. And that when we think about um the stance, uh, this the 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 stand that we have for the truth and for the gospel, um we then think about the spiritual weapons and the spiritual weapons of our warfare, um is the whole armor of God, and we see that in um Ephesians six right from verse ten through to verse eighteen. And it says there that we put on the whole arm of God, that we continue to stand for the whole counsel of God, that we continue to continue to stand for the, the truth of God as we continue to, to, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, if So when we look at um, these two verses that we've seen today, the next uh, uh, defense that we have as believers is our biggest tool in our toolkit, in our war toolkit, it's to evangelize, uh, it's to share the gospel. And number one, to outreach to the confused. And two, that second category of people is to um, the rescuing of the lost, uh, is to continue to evangelize. And so um, that brings us pretty much to sort of the end of this, a particular paragraph in the book of Jude, but at the same time, it's filled with wonderful truths for us as a believer. This part of Jude's letter is the practical part. Um, this is the doing part. I
This is a wonderful portion of scripture. Why? Because it's very practical. It's the practical part of our faith. You know, it's, 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 it's amazing and absolutely encouraging that we get to, Jude gets to tell us um, one who is ungodly, one who has turned away from truth. And it's been wonderful to be able to carry up this study over the last few months. But this part of Jude's letter becomes a lot more beneficial for us as believers. Why? Because this is where we can walk out our faith. This is where Jude says, okay, now you know what the state of these men are. Now go share the gospel with them. Hey, now it's your responsibility, the believers, is to continue to, those who are in a state of confusion, pray and move in your heart to share the gospel. Those who are totally in a state of apostasy, how do we, out of fear and reverence with, for the Lord, continue to stand for truth against such non-truth? So saints, tonight's word is to be encouraged. Okay, um, And so we, we thank the Lord that we have the truth of the scriptures in our hands uh, that can help us um, in our life as those who would share the gospel. And remember, I, I love the fact that Jesus jumped on that Nicodemus uh, opportunity uh, and shared with him that you must be born again. So if you are to be born again, you are to be born again, you are to be born again, you are to be born Amen. Okay, to finish us off, I'm going to ask Brother Oli, please. Uh, Amen.